Well, good afternoon and welcome to another video blog. I hope you're all keeping well and keeping safe. Just a reminder that our Sunday services uh, continue online till early, until early March and uh, our midweek prayer meeting continues online via Zoom 8.30 on Wednesday evening. So tomorrow evening 8.30 uh, is our prayer meeting via Zoom. And if you're not sure about uh, Zoom and you want to join us for the first time, just let me know and we'll give you whatever help you need with that. I'm going to read a passage from Romans, Romans chapter 5 and verses 6 to 11. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would dare even to die. But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since therefore we have now been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. For if, while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more now that we are reconciled shall we be saved by his life. More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we now have received reconciliation. I thought I would look at this passage from Romans chapter 5. It's quite a well-known passage uh, of Scripture. And it's a passage that reminds us of the extent of God's love for us and the magnitude of salvation. And it's good for us to remind ourselves of the, the, the magnitude of salvation. And, and it's perhaps good, uh, you know, at a time when we are feeling vulnerable and, and weak through circumstances, to remind ourselves of this great truth, that God has saved us from the plight of our sin through sending Christ to us. You know, the truth is that no matter what circumstances we're facing in life, our greatest weakness and our greatest plight is that we are sinners before a holy God incapable of saving ourselves from the plight of God's just condemnation and judgment. But as Paul says in verse 6, while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Paul equates weakness here, the, the Greek word asthenes, meaning incapacity, with our ungodliness. Because we are sinful and ungodly, we are weak, we are weak in the sense that we are morally incapacitated and unable to save ourselves from the impending judgment being those justly condemned by God because of our sin. But the great love of God for us, which Paul speaks of just prior to this passage in verse 5, as being poured out into the heart of the believer in salvation, the love of God for us is that Christ has died for the ungodly. God has demonstrated his great love, as Paul says in verse 8, in that he sent Christ to die, die for us while we were still sinners. As Paul points out, you know, <clears throat> on rare occasions, human beings might be motivated to die for someone who they regarded as a good person, or who they regard as a good person, but Christ died for us as those living in active rebellion against him. That's the love of God for us in Christ. And so the love of God the Father is expressed through the sending of God the Son. And the love of God the Son is expressed through his taking upon himself our flesh and dying our death and bearing our curse. And the love of God the Holy Spirit is, is known and demonstrated as Paul says in verse 5, in that he brings and applies the saving love of God to us. Christ in his love has justified us by his blood, by his own blood shed for our sins. As Paul says in, in verse 9, nine, by his blood, so that we who are weak and helpless in the face of God's wrath and judgment can now live in the assurance that 
we will be saved from the wrath to come because of the blood of Christ. To be justified by the blood of Christ, justification is a legal term. So to be justified by the blood of Christ means that we who trust in Christ are now in right standing with God because of the blood of Christ shed for us. And that right standing with God by the blood of Christ not only means that we are right with God, but more than this, we are, as Paul says in verse 10, reconciled to God by the death of his Son. The Greek term translated reconciled refers to the re-establishment of a broken relationship. You know, whereas justification is, is a legal term, it's the language of the courtroom, and refers to our being brought into right standing with God by the blood of Christ. The term reconciled is a relational term. It's the language of friendship. In salvation, God takes rebels and sinners whose hearts are turned away from him in rebellion and pride and who are hopelessly lost and subject to judgment. And by the blood of Christ, he justifies and reconciles them to him. And as Paul says at the end of verse 10, having been reconciled by the blood of Christ much more, now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. Because we are justified and reconciled by the death of Christ, by the blood of Christ, we now share in the life of the resurrected Christ. And we will live with him and we will reign with him in glory. And so as, as Paul says in, in verse 11, we can and we do rejoice. The good news is that God has poured out his wrath upon his son rather than us. That's the good news. And we can, as Paul says earlier on in chapter 5, rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Indeed, we can rejoice even in suffering because of the great hope that we have. Whatever life throws at us, we rejoice because we are justified, reconciled by the blood of Christ and we will live with Christ forever. So no matter how frail and vulnerable we feel at this time, let's remember what God has done for us in Christ. And let's remember that through the Holy Spirit, we live in constant fellowship with God, our Heavenly Father, and in constant awareness of God's saving love for us. And we now share in the life of our risen Savior. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your goodness. We thank you, Lord, that you are a God of goodness, of grace, of love, and of mercy. And we acknowledge that you are a sovereign God who provides for all our needs. And we give thanks to you for Christ, our Redeemer, who you sent to us, who in obedience and humility came to us in our flesh to live for us, to die for our sins, to rise again, so that through faith in him, we can know forgiveness and eternal life and the hope of glory. And we pray, Heavenly Father, that you would help us all to look to you in faith at this time, that we would be enabled to look to Christ our Saviour in faith, that we would, we would be enabled by your Spirit, Lord God, to humble ourselves before you, realising that we can cast all our cares on you because we know that you care for us as our Heavenly Father and that we are reconciled to you by the blood of your Son. And so we pray these things, Lord God, through and in the name of Jesus our Saviour. Amen.